Well, hello, Victory GP family from local and all over. We're so glad to be coming back to fall and getting things launched again. It's been a nice break this summer to just pause a little bit on some of the things that we've been doing, but we're excited to get going again. And um, I know September for everybody has been unusually um, weird to step into. It is still pumpkin spice season. So that's a good thing. Um, but school is weird and work is weird and all of the stuff that uh, we're getting, you know, announced to us from government agencies right now is subject to change all the time. And I know it just feels like super crazy, but we just want you to know that we are praying for you and we bless you, parents, especially those who are having to decide what to do with kids for school. And I know the last couple of weeks have been agonizing trying to navigate that, but the wisdom of God has been there and continues to be there for you you. And there is no right or wrong answers for this. Every family is different. Every child is different. And so we trust that you've just been following the leading of the Holy Spirit um, on that and going where he wants you to go and making the decisions that you need to make for your kids. We will be continuing to pray for you, praying for your kids, um, for the teachers, for those in that. We know that it's unknown, but God is constant and he is the known. So bless you as you continue to follow that through with your families. Um, as far as it goes with the church, we are going to begin next week starting into um, some kids programming and just navigating will be expanding throughout the weeks and months to come as we can figure out how to do it properly and and what works and what doesn't work and some of it's just trial and error but we'll we'll get it done and we want to make it as user friendly as possible for you and your family so um, bear with us and let's continue to just honor the Lord together as a family and on that note, one of the things that we're stepping into um, coming up, and I just want you to know about it, this coming Sunday, September 6th, we are starting with a Sunday night, um, first Sunday of the month, just a seeking time. We're looking at what the Holy Spirit wants to do. We're going to give you know, God just free reign to move. We want to have the time to just dedicate to him. Um, there'll be some prayer, there'll be some worship, just whatever the Lord leads us in. But we also just feel a slightly different twist to it. And I want to lean into that a little bit. The idea of seeking first the kingdom has been really high on my heart and on the leadership's heart in this season. The idea of the, the practical issues of life that we need, the things that we concern ourselves with, the things that we're worried about, the things that we try and solve. And Jesus just said, you know, God knows, the Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. And we want to just take the time at the top of the month to seek first the king and the kingdom and pursue him, honor him, make space for the Holy Spirit. I love um, what Catherine Coleman said, when the power of the spirit is there, miracles happen. I began to understand the power and how it operates. I discovered that certain things brought the presence of the Holy Spirit. Praise, for instance, just praising God, not asking for a single thing, but just praising him always brings the power. And I think that's so pure and so perfect. There's just something that doesn't seem rational about taking time to just honor God, just praise God, just pursue God. But that's where wisdom lies. That's where strength lies. That's where grace lies. That's where that encouragement from the inside out happens. That's where that relationship is built and where we find the wisdom and counsel that we need for the issues that we face. We just seek him. We honor him. We lift him high. He does the rest. There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. So good. But it says that the natural or unbelieving man does not accept the things, the teachings and revelations of the spirit of God for their foolishness, absurd and illogical to him. And he is incapable of understanding them because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated. And he is unqualified to judge spiritual matters. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about the situation that we're in right now, um, the way the world is inflamed and shaking, there's a lot of natural stuff that's going on, but I believe most of it is the product of a spiritual situation. There's a, a fight behind it. There's a battle behind it. There's a spiritual timeline behind it. And the natural man cannot discern it. The natural man does not know how to navigate it. So when it feels like it's, it's crazy and what are people doing and why are people acting like that and why do people think that? It's because we're dealing with a spiritual issue that can't be discerned in the natural. And so we want to look at this from God's perspective. It says the spiritual man or the spiritually mature Christian judges all things, questions and examines and applies what the Holy Spirit reveals. Yet he himself is judged by no one. The unbeliever cannot judge and understand the believer's spiritual nature. 
For who has known the mind and purposes of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ to be guided by his thoughts and his purposes. And I believe that's the key in moving forward. If, if we pause and just try and navigate in the natural, um, the stuff that we're facing, the things that are going on, the stuff that's on the news, the things that your kids are facing at school, what you're having to work through at the workplace, the practical stuff that doesn't actually make sense, we have to go back to the spiritual root of it. And the spiritual man needs to connect with that mind of Christ. And we will understand the spiritual things and apply our lives accordingly. We will have the guidance of his thoughts and his purposes. And that changes everything. That gives us hope. That gives us something to grab onto. So I really want to encourage you um, personally in your day-to-day -day walk, spend some time with the Lord. Get out of your head and get into your heart, get into that spirit place. The miracles, like Catherine Coleman said, when we just honor the Holy Spirit, the miracles, the, the wisdom, the stuff happens just almost by accident. It's a product of his presence, but pursue his presence, get out of the natural realm and pursue his wisdom, pursue his counsel, pursue his heart. And as we as a church move forward, we're gonna spend extra time doing that really excited about what we're launching into topically for this fall, but I'm going to save that for a bit. But this Sunday night, um, please plan to come if you at all can or tune in online six o'clock and we're just going to honor the Lord. We're going to lift him high. We're going to sing his praises. We're going to worship. We're going to um, pursue and we're going to see what he has planned for us. So bless you today and this week. We're praying for you. You are being led in triumph and the Holy Spirit is active in your life. So diffuse the fragrance of Christ wherever you go. Bless you.